Hello and welcome. Don't touch that dial. It's Noah and the vision to my Wanda, the infinity stones to my Thanos. Derek, hi, we're back in Westview, guys. And we're also back. <laughs> we had a, a tumultuous you know, week in the um, in the abide of household with like some food poisoning and stuff like that. But like, let's move on from that. Let's go back in time to WandaVision. What an era. What an era. It was just a beautiful moment in television history. <laughs> it was a scary moment in the world when it first came out, but man, was it entertaining. I'm really excited to talk about this show. We have not seen it since it aired. We did episodes on that. So if you want like our episode by episode, like deep dives, because we were, I would say a whole nother podcast in that era. This was 2021, right? This is, it's 2024 now. It's been a while. Pandemic. Yeah. It's been a while. I mean, even we weren't even doing video back then. And on top of that, we had some sort of makeshift set up with blankets hanging on the walls. So we've come a long way here at A Bite of Podcast. Mm, my God. I'm excited, though, to get into this. Before everything, follow us on all the socials, uh, Patreon, Discord, all of that great stuff. Uh, we are going to be um, doing Agatha all along. Hence, while we're going back to Westview, we thought it would be a good idea to kind of revisit it, right? We've been doing watch parties on our Discord. So if you're not on our Discord, we have depending on when you're listening to this or watching this, we have one more watch party for the last three episodes of WandaVision this Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So join that Discord, hop in the watch party channel, chat. There's no mics. We don't talk no. during watch parties. No. <gasps> no. We watch and we get our little fingies going. And it's honestly been a blast. I've been having a lot of fun. So thank you to those who have been joining us and you should all join us for the last one. Oh, so good. Okay. This is weird because like spoiler alert. Yeah, I guess it's been out for three plus three years, a little over three years. Um, all of WandaVision slash the MCU thus far can be spoiled going yeah. forward. Uh, the plot is WandaVision, yes. the first MCU show. <laughs> so let us officially take another bite of <laughs> WandaVision. Right. <laughs> So let's pretend, okay, we did a rewatch already. Yeah. yeah. Um, we watched all nine episodes, which was an interesting thing to do because we watched it as it was coming out. So we haven't binged it before. So seeing the last time on WandaVision and not skipping any of that, because why would you? Um, let's pretend the like social media embargo is still happening. Give me your initial reactions to rewatching WandaVision. Like, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about going back to Westview? Oh. So, like we said, we have not watched this since it first came out when it was coming out week by week. And ever since then, whenever we've done a Marvel series, we've always kind of done this thing of what are your top five Marvel series? And WandaVision always landed in my number one spot. I am happy to say that after rewatching it, it is not only still in my number one spot, but it is highlighted, it is bolded, it is glittering gold. Uh, and it just still is so good after mm. all this time. Mm. Yeah, I, you did have Miss Marvel, I think, above that. So mm. would you? Mm, I don't think I ever did. Or was that me? That was you. That was probably me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think WandaVision is in my top five of like favorite MCU Marvel things ever. I think it is almost a near perfect thing that Marvel has ever done. It was the beginning of phase four. It was post endgame. What was going to happen? We had a pandemic. but like. I think it, it's it's interesting to separate. Like, so now we're far away from that time, right? When all the theories are going out, there's the Mephisto thing, there's the connections with everything. But like, everybody was so together in this show, um, at least on the internet, right? In the circles that we were doing and on this podcast. And um, we really found a lot of the people, our community that way. So it holds a very special place in my heart. But watching it separated, right, from the internet and watching it every week, it's still... So good. Mm -hmm. It still holds up perfectly. That's exactly it. At, at the time, there was a bit of a hype around it, I think. And that kind of added to our excitement in watching it. But watching it now, when all that has faded, it's still just incredible. I think that there are so many pieces here. First, I, I think that there was a lot of care given to this series, right? Because this was the first Marvel 
television series, right? So you could tell that the plotting was perfectly done. Each installment, there wasn't a wasted episode, right? None of these episodes felt like filler. They were all working together to tell the story and really in an ingenious way, right? To tell the same one linear story through different nostalgic sitcom eras. Through decades, yeah. Through decades. And so what a feat to have to t- over t- to take. And I think that in looking at the work that was done, obviously with the sets and the costuming and how they were still themselves through all these different decades, uh, even though they looked differently or they were dressing differently, even even the house, even though the house looked different in each episode, there was still the staircase, there was still the fireplace, and there were still things that were a nod to the one that came before it. So I think in watching this, just seeing how meticulously it was planned and how well it was done, it still holds up three years later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think like our like initial reactions rewatching it still loved it. Still holds up. Go rewatch it if you haven't. Join us this Sunday to watch the last three episodes um, into Agatha all along. Um, but it was fun rewatching this with the eye of looking for things that we might have missed last time, um, which there was a few, but also realizing what the story was trying to tell us in the beginning. Because I think the thing that we missed watching it for the first time and not going back and watching it is that we know what the story was, right? We know that it was about her grief. We know that it was, she was trying to get all the things that were taken away from her. And we know that Agatha was pulling a lot of strings. So watching it again from the beginning and knowing that it's like, Oh, that's why that happened. That's why that happened. That's why the ads were happening. You Mm. you had the ticking time bomb type ad. And it was the bomb that her and her brother were staring at for two days, you know? So it's interesting rewatching it and knowing what happens in the end, but also like, just like in awe of the cast, Paul Bettany, Elizabeth Olsen, Catherine Hahn, everybody, um, Tiana Paris, so good. Not only playing the comedy, but the drama. Oh my God. Just flip flopping between the both of them. So fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to go back to one of the points that you were just making about n- knowing the things that are going to happen and kind of following along with it as it's being revealed, it was nice not having the static of, the questions, right? right? Is it Mephisto? Who is this? You know, what does this mean as far as this version of Quicksilver being here? You know, being able to drop all of that and really just watch it and see how, you know, these actors obviously knew the the trajectory, right. right, of what was happening. But to see them play it out and know what they were playing out, you could see the little minute details that they were working in there and just really how impressive that is, you know, Not only with Agatha, right, who was kind of the breakout star of the series, but even taking into account Paul Bettany as Vision. Vision existing in this world, being so happy across from the love of his life, but slowly realizing that things aren't right. And and looking at what does it mean to be happy, but by destroying other people's lives and, and giving up that happiness to make the world, quote, right again. Yeah, right. I, it is interesting, right? Even after, um, I mean, I have my feelings, especially you watching this. I have my feelings. I feel, God, I said feelings how many times in he one sentence? He has feelings. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, now I'm trying not to say that word. And now it's really hard. Uh, thoughts? Uh, yeah, <laughs> my thoughts are thinking about Multiverse of Madness. It is a very interesting contrast. With rewatching WandaVision, because I think watching WandaVision once, then watching Multiverse of Madness and being like, okay, I can kind of see like why Wanda would go that path. Like there's the dark hold, it's infecting her, right? But watching it again, it it does kind of irk me a Mm, bit mm -hmm. what they did with her in Multiverse of Madness. And that's like a whole nother discussion. But what I'm really excited for is that not only are we getting an Agatha spinoff and we're getting a Vision spinoff, but Wonder Man which we talked about in our initial uh, talk throughs with this, because we see the Grim Reaper mask and one of the, the opening credits and stuff. This show alone is getting like three spinoffs from it. That just shows you like how much story there is, but how much these characters mean to people. Um, and I'm very excited to see what they do with Agatha in this. So speaking of Agatha, um, watching it again and seeing how in the first pilot episode, how she kept trying to like, 
be there, be the nosy neighbor, but be in there and not like necessarily help, but not hinder at the same time. We know that she wants her powers. Mm -hmm. We know that she wants that autopilot magic that she talks about. So seeing her like put Wanda in these situations of let's see, let me test her abilities. Let me see how far she can go was cool to see because I didn't realize that even watching it the first time through knowing what happened. Mm -hmm. And I also think there's a piece of what Agatha is doing when you're watching it the second time around that you could really see where she's trying to gain Wanda's trust, right? To ultimately basically hold her children captive so that she can then get Wanda in her lair, you know, in the basement of her house. And so it's so fun watching this character that's supposed to be kind of like the wild next door neighbor. But in reality, there's a deeper and darker truth to it, Mm -hmm. which I love. And I think that Catherine Hahn does that so well. And you can see in all those moments how she's playing it up, how she's leaning into it. And even when you think of that, uh, the episode, um, I think it's on oh, on a very special episode when the boys grow up in an instant. Um, when that happens, she goes along with it. And when she comes in first and she says to Wanda, did you want me to take that again? You know, she's pushing her buttons. She's trying to get her to react in a certain way. And I just think the diabolical nature of who Agatha at that time known as Agnes is, um, it's more fun to watch the right. second time around because you know what she's truly doing. Yeah, I think she does. And she also was trying to encourage her to go as far as she can, right? Because she calls her chaos magic. She's the reason why we know why she's now called the Scarlet Witch. We we have that like actual magic part of the MCU, aside from Doctor Strange being ushered in because she's old, right? Um, what I have loved about Agatha though, and specifically Catherine Hahn, is that they made like sec- sexy Agatha Harkness a thing because in the comics, she's an old woman. She's like a governess, right? She's a nanny. Um, but ever since Catherine Hahn, they're like, oh, we should make her like sexy. So they've done that in the comics where now she's also sexy. Mm-hmm. So she's not an old woman anymore. So that is the effect that Catherine Hahn has on the MCU. <laughs> yes. The, the, the yesification of Agatha, yeah. uh, Agatha Harkness. Yeah. One question I do have, though, that I was wondering, and maybe they answered this and I just missed it. So in watching it the first time, you think that Agatha, I keep wanting to call her Agnes because that's what she called for most of the it's series. Agatha. Agatha. Uh, you think that she lived in Westview and she's just kind of put under this trance that Wanda has put them all under. So my question is, when did Agatha actually get to Westview? I don't think they answered that. They don't, right? I think there was a part in the episode where she takes her down to the basement and she's she's talking about it like she's revealing herself, right? Her mm-hmm. hair is all like tussled up and she's not the put together nosy neighbor anymore. Um, she let her hair down, if you will. Mm. She says something about like, she felt it or she knew like how much magic was here and she was drawn to it. Mm. So I, I actually like thinking back, I'm like, were you drawn to it while Wanda was there or were you already there? Like there was something about that place in general. So I'm not too sure maybe in Agatha all along or a listener, if you know, just let us know. The um, moment that Vision signed the deed, she could feel the magic and she oh, moved there. She's watching that again. It is really interesting just thinking about the show, um, how they did it, right? Because I think all of us, in the first episode, we do get that dinner with the hearts where, you know, that Deborah Jo Rupp, where she was like, stop it, stop it. Not only is it like, stop, you know, taking over all of us, but also like stop him from choking. Right. Um, where the entire episode flipped, right? The first three episodes are so kind of just fun and airy. And then as it gets on, it gets dark and it gets serious. It still has that funny nature, right? Because they are sitcoms and they're still doing that throughout the decades. But it's interesting to see how even the sitcoms through the decades, how they changed with that story. Mm -hmm. Um, So I liked that watching it again and watching it in all one big spurt almost. uh, That it just not only did the story change with what they were doing, but it was just cool to see yeah. in real time. Yeah. And I, I have to admit that those first three episodes are really my favorite part of this series. The first episode, the pilot is so good. So good. I love living just in Westview, right? Cause once we get past those three, right in the third one now in color, we meet 
um, Monica, Tiona Paris, and then we see her get thrown outside of the hex. So we know what's going on out there. Um, but really just living in Westview with Wanda and Vision in that sort of fake happy place. But yet we have those weird occurrences, right? We have the sort of drone helicopter come in. We have the thing with the radio, the beekeeper, uh, the beekeeper, all those little creepy mysteries. Um, I loved living in that Westview with them before we get into all the sword conspiracy stuff. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun because it's like, once you get toward to the end, it's like, Oh, the beekeeper wasn't Mephisto. It was just a worker <laughs> from sword. And it just changed him as he went into the sitcom. Right. Right. Um, Having Darcy in there, having Jimmy Woo. I mean, this show just introduced so many good characters. And what I'm loving, so Jack Schaefer was kind of a co-creator for the show with Matt Shackman, um, definitely a writer um, for WandaVision. And they're the ones that took on doing Agatha, um, which is really exciting because you have somebody that was there for the creation of WandaVision carrying on that feel. Mm -hmm. And with Agatha, we're still getting that formula of you know, each episode is like a different thing, but it's a horror genre, right? right? Um, that's what they've said, at least. And I'm I'm not sure it's going to be like exactly like WandaVision where it's like a televised thing. Um, but just even looking at the trailers, it's like, oh, there's like Wizard of Oz. There's like you um, party with the Ouija board. It's, it looks very like, OK, these are horror yeah. movies or elements. One of the things that I noticed in their ad campaign is I think a week or two ago, they released new posters for the mm. show. And what was interesting is that on my 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 feed, there was different outlets saying, oh, a new poster just dropped, but they were different posters each right. time. And each one was emulating a different horror genre, sort of like the haunted house, the woods. And then also some that were out of left field. So it was like True Detective mm -hmm. was one of them that they were emulating. Um, I believe the first trailer we got for Agatha was Mayor of Easttown. So yes. it does very much seem like they're going for the gritty mystery but also horror side of that mm -hmm. oh that makes me so happy i think one of the posters was monster house which was yes like, <laughs> yeah and somebody is a fan yeah <laughs> of monster they're like house. oh my god we have to do it yeah. to monster house <laughs> what was do you have a favorite episode if you could pick one episode above all of them out of these nine episodes which one would be your favorite it's oh yeah yeah it's oh that's a really good question i either want to say episode one Film before a live studio audience or episode three now in color. Mm -hmm. Very good. You got either like the Dick Van Dyke show or the Brady, Brady Bunch. Bunch. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm thinking about kind of really what they're setting up. Right. So the first one is all those initial mysteries of what the heck is going on here because they don't even know what's going on here. They don't know why there's a heart on their calendar. But then now in color is when we start to see the darker side of Wanda in this, especially in that conversation uh, with Monica Rambo. Um, literally trying to like, nope, you're not going to like take my fantasy away. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be in character. Yeah. Oh, and of course the camp of the stork coming off the right. painting in the room. And so just like that can't be seventies hijinks as well. How about you? Mm, I love the first episode as well. I think it's, it's so, so good, but an all new Halloween spectacular is probably my favorite. Not only for like it's in Halloween, but like that's when it like, all this stuff starts coming together. Everything starts melting together. And then you really have vision going off on his own. Mm. So you get to see Wanda spiral a little bit, trying to come to terms with, oh, this is what I've been doing, even if it was on purpose or not. Um, also, how do I control it with having the person that I love still love me willingly? Mm -hmm. So it's like, where does that free will and control come from? Where does the healing and trauma stop? So it was... It's an amazing episode. I just love that you also still get that family aspect of it before it all falls apart. And not to bit. mention the classic costumes. Exactly. Right. She's Ugh. like Scarlet Witch from back in the day. He's Vision from back in the day. It's just perfection. Or, or fortune teller, as she says. Right. Exactly. And he's a luchador. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I love that the look they give each other is very much emulating like that, that Scarlet Witch and Vision comic yeah. of them looking at each other. Oh, totally. And and in that episode is when you really see it, the the cracks in the relationship because he comes down and he says something along the lines of, "Well, this was the only thing in my closet." Right, because you didn't give me anything else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, it's it's such a good show. I'm very excited to see what they do with Agatha, right? We have the mystery upon mystery just in the trailers and stuff alone. It seems very much like, oh, something interesting is happening. We have Joe Locke playing the teen. That's what they're calling him. That's everything. I'm I'm curious to see, like, is it going to be Wiccan? If so, why? How? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. (laughs) Um, But I'm so excited for us to get more witches, more magic. That is one of my favorite aspects of Marvel Comics. So I'm glad that we're getting more of it. And it's not like Doctor Strange, right? Because I feel like Doctor Strange now is like multiversal. And it's like, it's a different type of magic. It feels more like practiced where Agatha feels more like witches right it feels yeah. like cauldrony it feels like it could be anything and you don't know there's runes i don't know it's it's like a different vibe yeah one of the things i'm most interested in is that how mrs hart or whatever her real name is deborah joe rupp is now one of the witches in the coven yeah what well, so i i want to know if she is a witch well right so i'm curious to know how because i mean i love deborah joe rupp yeah. you know what i mean i mean she's Kitty, the amazing Kitty from that 70s show. What a perfect person to include in WandaVision. Because like she is one of the faces for a lot of us for sitcoms, right? Because of that 70s show. Yeah. And so to include her in it is just, it's very special. And of course, the fact that that 70s show is a a sitcom based in another decade and that came out. Not filmed in that decade. Exactly. So that was really just great casting. And so I'm interested to see how we see mrs hart's evolution into becoming a part of this coven i don't cover cover (laughs) coven i i don't think this is my theory right okay if you don't want this to be spoiled i don't know for sure but like if you don't want anything like skip skip maybe spoiler alert yeah um so there's a part where it looks like she gets to the witch's road by going through some type of like cellar door situation Mm -hmm. i'm thinking it's in her basement and she just happens to be along for the ride so I don't know if she's a witch necessarily, but she kind of, it's in her basement. Mm. And then, so she's like going along with it. Right. And then she just goes along for the ride. So that's my theory. Like, I think it would be funny to have this group of witches, mysterious teen Agatha leading it. And then like a normal civilian mm. tagging along. Yeah. I, she could do it. Yeah. It is interesting though, because I think in one of the, one of the clips though, she says she's something like an earthen witch or a something like that so mm-hmm. she does give herself a title of witch i don't know really yeah i didn't see that i, I it's when well it, erase yeah. everything i just said well yeah it's like <laughs> well but who knows though maybe right. it is in her basement and agatha just makes her a witch or mm-hmm. says that she's a witch and gives her that that title Arthur, which that's interesting because i know rio is the green witch yeah it's something so like weird. that Mm, potions, protection. I'm very excited. That cast is stacked. Oh my gosh. And I love that they're going to be singing. Oh, you can't have Patty Lapone. I was going to say, I mean, Tony, multiple Tony award winning Patty Lapone is in this. I mean, that's like mind, mind blowing. I mean, (laughs) the fact that like, I never in a million years would you have, like what I have thought, like Joe Locke from Heartstopper, Patty Lapone, Aubrey Plaza, Zashir Zameda. Like it's it's like the wildest bunch of people, but I think it's going to make so much sense. And what a like a fun time, not only for this podcast, because we're going Agatha all along directly into Heartstopper, which we are doing. Uh, duh. Um, so we're getting like double doses of Joe Locke. It's just a fun time yeah. for everybody. I'm very excited for this. And it, and uh, I mean, to speak outside of this, it feels like we've been in a little bit of a drought over the summer of things to watch. And so we're it's kind of weird. going full force into fall, which is exciting. Yeah. And this is one of the very few Marvel properties that are coming out this year. Um, so it's exciting. You know, I'm yeah. glad that they scaled back a bit because watching something that was their very first TV go and how much care and attention and just so well done. Yeah. And then some of the stuff we got, Secret Invasion, I'm sorry. (laughs) Don't be sorry. It's the truth. (laughs) Um, We tried. Uh, But I'm glad they're realizing some things, right? And they need to do that. So my fingers are crossed. Agatha all along does really well. And it's a great show and people receive it well. Um, Horror. Horror. Oh, my God. You sound like you're from New York. Oh, God. Horror. See, okay. Horror? It's... (laughs) Horror. It sounds that is one of the words that I feel like if you think about too much, you cannot say it starts coming out worse and worse. So you know what I mean? Spooky, spooky, spooky. 
<laughs> yeah, let's stick with that. I'm not going to say yeah. it again. <laughs> and I, I do want to also, one of the things that I was thinking about is, like you had said, how how I feel like as the series went on for Marvel, there, there were conversations that we were having where we were going, okay, but why did they do that? Hmm. Why did this happen? It doesn't make sense. Whereas in WandaVision, I never felt that way. You well, know? Yeah, I think it was like, one, it was new territory, but it was also like, these characters were familiar, right? And we knew generally that the show was going to be taking place in something that was self-contained. So it was almost like we had the freedom to just sit there and be along for the ride, as opposed to some of this other stuff where it was like, why are we doing this? Like, this is out in the real world. Like, this is interesting, you know? So I feel like that that's an aspect personally with WandaVision where it's like, it's self-contained and we could just like sit there and be like, what is going to happen? Anything can happen because Wanda is Wanda and she's doing this. Mm-hmm. Oh, but then it was devastating, right? <laughs> yeah, it really was. I have to say upon second viewing, I understood the ship of Theseus a little more. So mm-hmm. I was, I was happy to go back and, and watch that. And I feel like the first time we watched it, it was like during that five o'clock in the morning phase that we had of watching Marvel shows. So giving me deep philosophy in the middle of a fight at five o'clock in the morning, my brain could not handle it. But this time I was like, okay, I get it. I get what they're doing here. Yeah. It makes me excited for the vision show. Yeah. Too. Because we're just, we're, we're going to be getting vision. Yeah. It's just that he's going to be a different color. Well, right. It's, it's going to be interesting because like what type of vision is this? Because that white vision left right after he was like, oh, like I can't kill you because you're not the true vision, but I'm not the true vision either. But also I have all of the downloaded memories of the vision. So So am I the vision? Yeah. So he's going to go off. I I'm curious because i know that they're taking inspiration from tom king's vision series where he Mm. has like a wife and kids that are like androids as well don't don't tell wanda he gets remarried and has more kids she's gonna kill them well (laughs) and a dog named sparky no Um, so it's gonna be interesting are we going to get the same type of like west viewian situation where he's pretending to have a family or does he make a family like what's gonna happen so i'm Mm. very excited for that yeah that'll be Um, interesting but I mean, you know, I, I we kind of wanted to do this episode to get us get us back in the mind space of WandaVision and to Agatha, right? Um, is there anything that you're really looking forward to for Agatha after watching this? I think that what I'm looking forward to is the arc for Agatha in the sense that, I mean, we had to know that she wasn't going to just sit quietly in Westview and play the role. Well, it seems like it until somebody wakes her up. Right. And so that's the thing is that's what I'm most curious about. How does she get woken up? What does this journey mean for her? And at the end of it, you know, if she survives all this and she does get her magic back, what does that mean for the greater narrative of the story of, is she going to try and find Wanda again? Is she going to try and enact revenge or will she not even make it? Yeah. That we don't know. Do you think Wanda's going to come back? And Agatha all along? No. Really? Yeah. I think, I hope she does. Personally. I I mean, I think it's one of those things where I miss having her in the MCU. And I think she is such a powerhouse. And there's so much of her left untold. And she deserves a better chance. That's the thing I agree with. And you had kind of touched on it before. Was that at the end of this series... She understands what she's done and she understands why it was wrong. So for her to completely go in the opposite direction in multiverse of madness, it's it's confusing. Yeah. And it's it's one of those things. Again, this we could literally do a whole nother podcast of like revisiting everything that Wanda's ever done. Um, I, I I think it's one of those things of two separate people having two separate visions, and it was set up to be <laughs> any type of way. And Unfortunately, it was just like a certain direction, right? I know that recently there's been, I don't know if this is true, but like somebody had saw, like somebody revealed information about like the first kind of script for the Wanda's story or whatever. And it was going to be Wanda was a protagonist and with Doctor Strange the whole time and like fighting something. So she was supposed to be a hero with Doctor Strange, supposedly, right? They made her a villain. Which I don't want to believe because then that would make me mad, you know? Uh, yeah. And Wanda is a very complicated character, right? She has been in the in the comics. Um, so I do think it is good to have a complicated story for her. But right after WandaVision is odd. Yeah. Now it does involve her children. 
So, hey, no more mutants. That's where that comes from. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess we could say although we learned that this whole Westview experience happened because of her grief, she still never came to terms with what she's gone through. They all through. need therapy still. Absolutely. <laughs> and don't forget, she she realized what she did was wrong. And then at the end of it, she was left by herself again. But still, I don't want to believe that that then means that you go stealing other versions of yourselves, kids. No, no. The dark hold was there. So that's what I'm like. It was whispering onto. to her. Right, right. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that arc for Agatha as well. And what does that look like? Like, what is going to be ultimately where that series leaves off? Like, what, what is she going to be? Is she going to be more in line with the Agatha that's in the comics? Well, Ag- Agatha can be an antagonist, but mm-hmm. she's not like world dominating, right? So what, where is that going to leave her? Yeah. And in the Vision series, right, she's kind of, she helps them, doesn't she? Or is she evil in the Vision series? But she does. Right? She helps them. Yeah. yeah. Right? So she's not like a bad, she's You're not talking a about villain. the comic. The comic. Yes, exactly. Um, so. Maybe that's what it is. She she goes through this and gets some sort of pays some sort of penance and comes out sort of a better witch on the other side. Yeah. I mean, I think that some of the things that make Agatha Agatha is like she does kind of look out for herself. Mm -hmm. But generally, you know, especially for like which kind she will, you know, bat for the right team. Depending. So homosexuals. Yeah. (laughs) Well, (laughs) a teen. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I'm excited for. I'm excited to just see Agatha, and I'm mm-hmm. excited to be back in Westview in some shape or form. Um, adding Arbor Plaza and the whole cast is just going to be... If you've never seen Legion that was on FX, Aubrey Plaza, that was like her first dip into Marvel stuff. Um, she played Lenny. Fantastic. That's actually what made me love Aubrey Plaza. Mm. Insane acting. Just bonkers out of this world. She's a great... I'm excited yeah. to see what she does. I just want to completely give myself over to whatever journey this group of actors wants mm-hmm. to take me on because they're just too powerful not to do that. So whisk me away, Catherine Hahn at Al. I am <laughs> I am in for the journey. Is there anything? Okay, we're we're wrapping this up, right? Is there anything that you noticed about Agatha this watch through? Because we're, you know, we're tying this back into Agatha all along. Is there anything that you noticed this watch through or appreciated with Agatha specifically? Going into... Yeah, I think it was what I had said before in the fact that you really got to see the poking and prodding she was doing the entire time and how the helpful zany neighbor was actually someone that was trying to get in there and get information. And I really appreciated that. Oh, uh, agreed. Yeah. I love the... I think the reveal hits just as hard Mm -hmm. because like, even though you're watching it and you know what's going to happen, just watching it again, it's just like... I'm like oddly rooting for her and it's just so cool. But then like, I don't think I sympathized again. I could be contradicting myself because we've done episodes on every single one of these episodes before. Um, I don't think I sympathized with her as much the first time as I did this time, Hmm. just seeing like her origin story almost like she, she was drawn to the dark forbidden magic and she just couldn't help it. Right. And she ended up, yes, like killing her coven for it. But like, what does that look like? Is she going to answer for that? Is there going to be some repercussions in Agatha? So I'm I'm curious to see what that's going to be. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm very excited. Also, what made me excited watching this, Matt Shackman is the one that creative mind director for WandaVision. He's doing Fantastic Four First Steps, which is also like a period piece. Yeah. That makes me so excited. Well, we know he can do it well, so. He met with Dick Van Dyke <laughs> to do the show. Yeah. <laughs> They made Vision blue because it wouldn't show up right in black and white. I'm just, you know. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And I also just want to say um, the missile coming in to the Maximoff apartment literally made me yell out loud. I completely forgot. They jump scared me and they got me good. Yeah, it's so abrupt. The editing in this show, fantastic. Watching it again, some like especially during the watch party, I'm like, Oh my God, the computer skipped or like it, like something's wrong with the internet. It's like, no, that's just how they edit it. Oh, so good. So good. Ugh. Just so perfectly executed. Yeah. Well done, man. I'm excited. Let us know what you're excited about. Comment below. Um, if you're on YouTube, comment below. If you're on Spotify, you can also leave comments now on episodes. Um, 
or just like at us and say hi. I hated this episode. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Have you given us five stars yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, see you guys with Agatha. Oh, Ooh, when it comes out, don't forget that watch party Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern with Agatha. Agatha. Oh, <laughs> All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye.